family is pastor john dada here i welcome you to our youtube channel i know that this word you're about to listen to is going to bless you so please share this video share this word and if you haven't already subscribe to our youtube channel like and turn on your notification button so each time a new word is uploaded you don't miss out i look forward to hearing your testimonies god bless you as you listen to this word let's dive in for us. Thank God for this conference today, for allowing you and me to be in this day. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Your word says, enter your gates with thanksgiving. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you, almighty God, for allowing us to be here today. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your grace that is sufficient for us. We thank you, almighty God, for your mercies that endure us forever. We thank you for this conference, almighty God. We bless your name, O oh Lord. Your word says, if my name be lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you, almighty God, for your way to touch lives today. We thank you, Lord, for a turnaround in our lives. Father, we thank you, almighty God, for an anointing that is going to break yokes today. Father, we thank you, almighty God, that you are going to be lifted up. Thank you, Lord, the God, that you are going to fill us up, up, almighty God, even in our spiritual lives. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, that deliverance is going to take place. In the name which is above every other name, we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Hallelujah. You know this place that we are in, a lot of people use this place. Different people use this place. We want to plead the blood of Jesus upon this place. Hallelujah. We want to plead the blood of Jesus. Amen. So as we are going to pray, we are going to pray that this place be sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Let's just open our mouths and just pray and plead the blood of Jesus upon this place. Hallelujah. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for this venue. Father God, we speak the blood of Jesus upon this place. Father, we sanctify it by the precious blood of Jesus. Every chair, every room in this auditorium, we speak the blood of Jesus. Father, oh God, we come against every spirit in the name of Jesus that is not of you. In the name which is above every other name, we sanctify it by the blood of Jesus. We sanctify it by the blood of Jesus. Any altars that are lifted up during our presence, Father God, we break them into irreplaceable pieces. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. We bless your name. For in Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 In the book of Daniel, hallelujah. I think it's Daniel 6, very 10, verse 10. It says that uh, Daniel prayed for 21 days. But the prayer was delayed simply because there was a prince which was ruling around Persia. He said that prince of Persia, of the kingdom of Persia, caused delay for prayers. So in every town there's a prince of darkness that rules. We want to come against that prince of Akriton, of this place, in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray. We want to pull down the prince of this area, of any, pre, any, any spirit of negativity, any spirit that is not of God, any witches, any wizards, we want to come against them in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this place, but oh God, we come against the spirit of the prince of the air, in the name of Jesus, any strongholds around this area of Akriton, any prince of Akriton, we pull it down in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth. God has given us the spirit of, he's not given us the spirit of fear, but he's given us the spirit of power. Open your mouth and begin to pray in the name of Jesus. We pull down the stronghold of this area in the name of Jesus. Father, we take authority. We take authority. We take authority in the name of Jesus against any spirit that is not 
We thank you, King of Glory. We thank you, Almighty God, that we are going to have victory at this conference. In the name of Jesus, any spirit of resistance, in the name of Jesus, we come against it in the mighty name of Jesus. Any spirit of negativity, in the name of Jesus, we come against it in the name of Jesus. We take authority over every evil altar in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the book of Luke chapter 10, verse 19, it says, I've given you authority to trample upon serpents and scorpions. So when you are praying, we are praying in authority. We speak in authority because the one in us is greater than the one that is in the world. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are also going to pray, hallelujah, Amen. for our vessels of today. I only have 10 minutes on here. We are going to pray for our pastors, our speakers, Pastor Patient and Pastor Joan. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That God will use them mightily today. Yes, Lord. You need to learn to pray for your pastors. Amen. That God will speak to you through them in Amen. the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. That when they are speaking, they are not speaking out of their own mind, but they will speak through the mind of God. Hallelujah. Yes. That their tongue will be loosed in the mighty name of Jesus. That God will speak through them in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and begin to pray for our vessels today. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for the vessels that you are going to use today. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We thank you for Pastor Joanne. We thank you for Pastor Patience. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that you speak to them. In the name of Jesus, we will hear from them. You will make their tongue be loosed. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, breathe over them. In the name of Jesus, touch them, Almighty God. Lord, we thank you that our spiritual ears will be open today. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for an anointing upon their lives, oh God. In the name of Jesus, an anointing that will break their yoke. In the name of Jesus. Father, give them utterance today. We bless your name, oh God. For in Jesus mighty name we are praying. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In the book of First Corinthians 2 verse 14, it talks of the natural body. That the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. When we come into a conference like this, if you look at a person with your physical or your natural thing, you will not receive from them. We need to pray for our physical senses, our spiritual eyes, our ears, our the way we see, our touches. Someone when you are seeing things in the physical, if someone just passes through and knocks you, you'll be offended. But when you see things in the spirit, you don't even see it. When you look things, when you see things with your carnal or your your physical eyes, when someone comes here, you start thinking, why is she dressed in that color? Because the the, the battle starts from the mind here. Yes. So today we want to ask God that every physical sense be subjected to the authority of Jesus Christ. We want our flesh, our carnal mind to be under the subjection of Jesus Christ. That will be able to see things with the spiritual. That when someone is telling it, it, it doesn't matter their accent, it doesn't matter what they are wearing. But we want to hear from God. So every physical, every physical sense may it be subjected to the feet of the Lord. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, today, in the name of Jesus, I subject my physical, my physical body under the subjection of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, my sight, my nose, my sense of hearing, the way I see things today, may they be subjected to your authority. In the name of Jesus, Father, oh God, when I see things, when I see them, May I see them through how you see them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, when I speak, when I smell, when I touch, Almighty God, may it be that I'm led by your ears. May I, may I be that, may I be led by you, Almighty God. In the name of Jesus Christ, Father, I thank you. Father, glorify your name. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, Almighty God. Thank you, King of Kings. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, King of Kings. Yes. Today we are here because we are so expectant. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. There are things that we expect in God to do in our lives. Yes. We want our spiritual life, our spiritual lives to be changed. Yes. 
Hallelujah. We want our lives to be touched. We want to, to, to move in a higher dimension of operation. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So we want to pray that the hope, that expectation that made you to come here today, may it not be cut short today. Amen. Say the, 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 the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. Amen. So that thing that you're expecting, that you cannot share with anyone, yes. that made you to come here and say, God, this thing has to change. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. May it not be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. When, when Mary heard that Elizabeth was pregnant, when she went to meet her, there is something that happened. There was an impartation. We want to have an impartation. As women like this, there was a, something happened. John jumped when, uh, when he was in, uh, in, in his mother's womb because they saw Mary. Hallelujah. May there be something that is going to happen today. May your expectation not be cut short. Just open your mouth and begin to pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that our expectations as women are right shall not be cut short. Our hope shall not be cut short. That which we are hoping for shall not be cut short. In the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, King of Kings. We bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We just want to acknowledge. Just open your mouth and just thank God uh, for the Holy Spirit in this place. We want the Holy Spirit to take over. Amen. Hallelujah. As we decrease that he may increase in us. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We acknowledge the presence of the Holy Spirit in this place. Holy Spirit, take over right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, take over right now. In the name of Jesus, take over. Take over the program. Take over. Take over in every department. In the praise and worship, take over. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. Hallelujah. If you are able to speak in tongues, just open your mouth and just speak in a heavenly language. Rava sata rava shekia de. Mare ko soto riba baba katere bo chika. Li krabo chaba hando. Reba sata rava chika. Mare ke sete rava te. Ah, rava sata leke tere bo chika. Mali ka bo chaba haya. Re ta rava saka taka. Li baba sata ri anda rava hando. Ri ka katere bo chika rava haya. In Jesus mighty name we are praying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just give a clip offering unto the Lord. Hallelujah. He's a great God. He's a great God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Indeed, our God is a great God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Psalm 34, verse 3 say, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I want us to be on our feet and tell our neighbor. Tell somebody sitting beside you now, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Can you tell someone sitting beside you now, Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. This morning we are going to worship the Lord together. This morning as we lift up our hands. And we take our call to worship this morning. We worship you, Jesus.
does miracles today. Hallelujah. They're still healing today. Hallelujah. The dead are still rising up today. The lame are still walking. The blind get their eyes opened up. That's why we worship the King of Glory. Strongholds are still being moved. Say, God, we believe. And yes, we can see that wonders are still what you do. We say, body.
Jesus. Somebody worship Adonai. Somebody give him worship. Somebody give him praise. He alone is worthy. Jesus, you are worthy of all our worship. All the angels, they worship him. They worship him. All the hosts, they worship him. Because he alone is worthy. Father, we worship you this morning. We exalt you this morning. We magnify you this morning. We need to hide you this morning. We need to hide you this morning. Father, we exalt you. We magnify you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory be to your holy name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Savior. Hallelujah. Can somebody just put their hands together for Jesus this morning? Let's make it louder. Let's make it higher. Let's make it better. He alone is there our cloud this morning. into the next part, in fact this is the next part of the session, I would like to welcome everyone. So everyone is welcome in the presence of the Lord and there will be people I will be especially welcoming but I don't want anyone to feel that they're less special. Each and every one of us are special and we are so grateful that you have joined us today. I am also grateful for the people that are joining us online. Thank you very much and we pray that you will be able to experience the presence of the Lord as we're able as we're able to experience it this uh, morning. Um, the first person I would like to welcome is uh, Pastor Patience Udonsi. She's just gone out She's the lady in bright yellow orange. She is the one who is going to be ministering for us. So we thank God for her life. Um, and I, I, I know I have experienced um, her preaching. And I, I, if you haven't heard her speak before, I am so happy that you're going to be able to hear it for yourself. Um, so she is here. Uh, and she's going to be ministering for us. So she is the one who's going to give us the word. I would also like to welcome Pastor Anne Lincoln. Thank you very much, Pastor. Thank you for joining us today. I was so happy to have you here. Um, one thing that I always say is that our pastor, obviously she has people who support her. She might not always be able to tell us what is going on in her life, but these are the women that she will be praying with. She has taken a lot of effort to prepare for this service. So when we have not been there, this sleepless nights, that's for fasting and praying. These are the women that have stood with our pastor and supported her. So we are so grateful to actually be able to see them here because sometimes you don't see the people who are behind, you know, we, yes, absolutely, behind the scene. We don't get to see them. So it's actually a great opportunity for us to be able to see these women that are encouraging our pastor. And of course, our host pastor here, Pastor John Dada. So thank you very much. Our third this is our third women's conference and I remember the first one and uh, it's been getting better and better every year uh, and we thank God because when we started a pastor always says we're very large but we were even larger than this before <laughs> yeah. we were even larger than this before but pastor was like this is the women's conference the Lord has spoken to me and he has said it very clearly and that is something that she moved forward with um, and it was really an act of faith more than anything because I, they weren't. They, when I say large, I'm being uh, sarcastic. <laughs> we weren't very many. There were, there were a few of us. So we thank God that it's been getting larger and larger. Last year was challenging because obviously we were in the middle of the pandemic. So it was virtual. Um, and again, everyone pulls together. So thank you for the women in this church who always do a great job with, with hosting. And we pray that when other churches are hosting their women's conference, we will be able to come and support you because you always wonderfully support us. So let's go away. Because you're next. <laughs> 
So, so yes, um, and please hang around when we have our coffee break. Please introduce yourself to one another. This is an opportunity to network. We're not just here to be in the presence of the Lord. We're here to network with one another as well, to learn from one another. Of course, we're going to be learning from the women that are going to be stood here at the pulpit, but there is a lot of learning that we can from one another, and this is just an opportunity. So it's an opportunity to be in the presence of the Lord, but to social socialize and to network. This is an opportunity for us to share um, some of the things that we are willing to share with other women and to get encouragement, to get support. So without further ado and without wasting more time, I'm going to uh, invite our host, Pastor Joan, uh, to come and lead us into the opening charge. Hallelujah. If that clap was for me, then. <laughs> Joan, I don't even know what to say. Come on, put your hands together for the King of Glory. Put your hands together for the Lord of Lords. Put your hands together for the Almighty. Hallelujah. You know, the thing is, if the queen should walk in here, no one will sit down there. Because I said, put your hands together for the King of Kings. You all rise and come together. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together for the King of Glory. Hallelujah. Woo. You know, I shouldn't have joined anyone to celebrate the King of Kings. You know why? We are survivors. We made it through the pandemic. Last year, by this time, we had this conference on, on, online. It was a virtual conference because we couldn't meet, we couldn't hug. But today we are hugging and hugging. It's also nice to have you Come on, somebody who's grateful to have made it through the pandemic. So many died, so many passed away. But here you are, rise to your feet and put your hands together. Forget about what may be worrying you right now. That's why you're in his presence anyway. There's an open invitation. It says, come unto me, all you who are labored, who are worried with heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So in the presence of God, that's where rest comes. So open your heart. Hallelujah. Can we be seated? Amen. Amen. I'm just going to take us in through the opening charge to get us ready for pastor patience. Amen. 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 To get us ready for God through her. Hallelujah. Yes. To get us ready for God through her. Hallelujah. Amen. So I welcome you all to the third edition, edition of Women Arise Conference. It's something the Lord puts in my spirit. And um, like Tari said, it's been going from glory to glory. Amen. So thank you all for making our time to be here. I'm trusting God that you will not leave the same in Jesus' name. Amen. Our online members, I'm sure there are people who are watching via Facebook. I celebrate you and I trust God that the same electric you feel in this place. You'll be feeling same there as well in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please open your Bibles with me to John chapter 10 and verse 10. John chapter... Sorry, let's say John. Job chapter 10. <laughs> Job chapter 10 and verse Job. 10. Yeah, Job. The very popular man. And I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. It says, You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. You guided my conception and formed me in the womb. During intercourse, the man releases between 40 million and 1.2 billion sperm cells. During intercourse, that's what happens. Between 40 million sperm cells to 1.2 billion, not even million sperm cells. And out of all this that was produced, only one makes it to the egg. Only one makes it out. Only one makes it alive, and that's you. That's you. Only one makes it. And I want you to understand that for one to make it out of 40 odd million or 1.2 odd billion, it took a struggle. 
It entailed the struggle. It entailed the battle. There was so, they had to fight for survival, you know? Survival of the smartest, the fastest, because they were all scrambling to make it through. They had to fight. So you have always been a survivor right from birth. Right from your mother's womb, you have been a fighter. Because for you to have made it through, you fought. But there's something that is so interesting. The Bible says that the race is not to the swift. Neither is the battle to the strong. So you did not just make it through because you were the fastest of, 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 of the sperm cells that could make it through. You were not the fastest. You made it through because scripture says, God guided my conception. To guide someone means to give him direction. So whilst others were scrambling to make it, whilst others were in the crowd fighting, who would come out first, who would make it? God led you. He said, leave the crowd and I would guide you. I would show you the path. And he led you and you landed safely in your mother's womb. And here you are sitting here. Woman, I've come to encourage, I've come to challenge, I've come to tell you that you're not a product of chance. You're not a product of error. You're not a product of mistake. It took out of 1.2 billion for you to get here. You fought right in the womb. The Lord led you. The Lord guided you. The Lord saw to it. He ensured that you made it to safety even in your mother's womb. And the reason he did that, God, for God to have ensured, for God to have guided, the scripture says, for you guided my conception. For God to have guided your conception and ensured that you came out safe is because he knows that you are here on an assignment. You have an assignment to complete. You have a mission to accomplish and you have a purpose to fulfill and that is why you are here. The pandemic came, it took millions out, it did not take you out because God has not finished with you yet. Because there's still so much to be done. There's still something left for you to do. There's still a mission for you to accomplish. That is why the pandemic could not take you out. It does not matter the circumstance that surrounds your breath. You are not a product of mistake. You are not here by chance. You are not here by error. You are God's intentional plan. You are God's weapon. You are God's masterpiece. Scripture actually says in Jeremiah 51 and verse 20, it says, with you, I will pull down kingdoms, I will pull down nations with you. So you are God's weapon of mass destruction. You are God's asset. You are his master plan. You are not here by mistake, woman. Come on, tell yourself I'm not here by mistake. God was so intentional about your birth. God is so intentional about you, and that is why you are so here. That's why you are seated here. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 15. It says, and I'm, I'm reading from the Amplified Version, Genesis 3.15. And I'll put enmity between you and the woman. I like the way the Amplified says it. It says, open hostility. And I'll put enmity, open hostility between you and the woman. So it's no secret that you are the devil's enemy. Your enmity with the devil is it's, it's an open secret. So if you still think that the devil is your friend, this scripture is letting you know that before the foundations of the earth, before you were born, God has already made both of you enemies. So I will put enemy to between you and the woman, and between your seed and her seed. So this pronouncement, like we know, was addressed to the devil. He says, he shall fatally bruise your head. The seed of the woman will fatally bruise your head. Hey, the enemy knows that your seed is something dangerous. He knows that your seed is here on assignment to bruise his head. He knows your seed is here on assignment to finish him off. He knows your seed is here on assignment to stop him. He knows that you are a threat. And listen, let me tell you, when the enemy unleashes attack on you, it's as a result of the fact that he's afraid of you. His, his attack on you is his response to your threat to him. If you have never known that, I want you to know that today. When it comes to attack, it's not because you're weak. It's not because you're helpless. It's not because you, you don't have a God who's defending you. It's because he does not want your, your seed to speak. It's because he wants to silence you. So he comes after you with all he has. He comes after your seed with all he has. Because your seed is an assignment to bruise his head. So he believes that when he comes after you and he stops you, you will hold your seed back and your seed will not fulfill purpose. Your seed is so powerful that the enemy will not stop at fighting you. He's relentless concerning you because of how powerful your seed is. Because destinies are connected to your seed. Deliverance, someone's deliverance is connected to your seed. Someone's advancement, someone's lifting, someone's elevation, someone's salvation is connected to your seed. So he comes to your seed, he comes at your seed with everything he has to stop your seed from fulfilling that purpose. 
He fights your ministry because he knows there are so many, so many destinies connected to that ministry that will be saved when they come. So he fights your ministry. And you begin to wonder, did God call me or did God not call me? You begin to doubt yourself. You don't have to doubt yourself. The reason attacking your ministry so much is because he knows that there's so much fire there. So he wants to discourage you and, not, and deceive you just like he deceived our sister Eve. He comes after your marriage because he knows that your marriage will become a model and a lot of people will look at your marriage and say, if this marriage will survive the storm, then there is hope for my marriage. Then he comes after your marriage to pull down your marriage so other young marriages will not have hope. Your marriage, your ministry, your assignments, your ideas, your dreams, your vision is a seed. The seed of the woman is not just about the begging of a child. Oh yes, that is your seed as well. But it's, it's not exclusive to that. Everything that God has called you to do, your assignment on earth is your seed. Your vision is your seed. That is your seed. And he comes to your seed with everything he has. Woman, I've come to tell you that your seed is not just for you. Your seed is not just for you. It's not for you to keep. It's not for you to hold. It's not for you to keep in the box and lock doors, you know, behind and say, I'm protecting my seed. Your seed is not for you. The seed within you is to serve the world. Your seed is meant to serve the world. God only entrusted you with that seed. You're only a custodian of that seed. Turn with me to the book of Judges chapter 13 and verse 5. Judges 13 and verse 5. This is a story of Sam, Samson's mom. I'm sure we all know the story of Samson in the Bible. The Bible tells us that she was barren. Can you please give me a little bit of volume on this mic, please? The Bible tells us she was barren. And you know, when one is barren and fruitful and you know, wants a child, you know how desperate she is. How much she prays and cries and makes vows and all that. Now, God finally heard her prayers. And scripture says, in Judges 13 and verse 5, it says, and finally, God heard her prayers. God heard the prayers of Samson's mom. For lo, God says to her, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come on his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. Amen. And he shall begin to deliver Israel out of all the hand of the out of the hand of the Philistines. So even after the long wait, when the seed finally came. It was not just her seed, it was a national seed. What God has put in you is global. What God has put in you is not just for your household alone. What God has put in you is not just for your family alone. It's not just for your community alone. What God has put in you is global. It's for the world. It is not just for you. This woman's seed finally came after the long wait. But when her seed came, it was not just for her and her household. The seed was an assignment to deliver the nation. Your seed has been sent on an assignment to deliver the nation, to deliver the world, to deliver your family, to deliver your community. Your seed is not just for you to hold or to keep. When you keep your seed, it is susceptible to dying. When you hold your seed, it is susceptible to dying. Your seed is for the world. There are books in you, life-changing books that should be written through you. There are songs that should be written. There are songs in you. There are dreams in you, businesses in you. Such that have never been seen or heard before. And you say, no, that's not true. Yes, that is true. You would think, a lot of times we think we have too many singers already. We have too many preachers already. We have too many songwriters already. We have too many um, skillful people already. We have too many cooks. We have too many people here and there. We have too many IT specialists already. So the world doesn't need me. The world needs you. If the world didn't need you, God would not say his word in Romans chapter 8 and verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creation waits for the manifestation of the sons of God. So if the world did not need you, that scripture would not be there. As unique as you are, so is your gift. So is your seed. So there is room for you. There is room in the world for you. Because there is seed in you. The world needs you. You can't say this is for that and this is for him and this is for her. A lot of people kill their seed because they believe it's not for people like me. It's for people like you. It's for a woman like you. Your seed is global. The worst thing that can happen to you is not knowing that you have a seed. Because you can have a seed. Every one of us here, we have seeds. And that's why God has brought us here. To stir up that seed. Perhaps the seed has been put to sleep or dead even. To stir it up. To open our eyes, to see it, to know it, to nurture it. The worst thing that can happen to anyone is not knowing that you have a seed. 
Bible tells me of a woman in the book of 2 Kings chapter 4. The, the late prophet's wife, the widow of the prophet. When, you know, debtors, debtors came to take her children, to take her seed. She didn't know she had a seed that could deliver her seed. That's why I said, you can have a seed and not even know you have a seed. They came for her seed. Yet she had a seed that could deliver her seed. In every seed there is a seed. Should I just quickly say before I continue, that even you, woman, you are a seed. You are a seed that carries a seed. And that's why the enemy comes for you. Because it is a double barrel ammunition that you are. Amen. You are a seed that carries a seed. She didn't know she had the seed until the prophet asked her, what is it you have? And she began to think, um, I have nothing. What do I have? Um, oh, there is this little bottle of oil. There is this little jar of oil. He said, that is it. She never realized that she had a seed that could eliminate poverty in her lineage forever. She never realized that she had a seed that could change the trajectory of her life forever. She never realized that she had a cross-breaking seed within her. And she was going about looking for solutions. A lot of times, the solutions we go about here and there looking for lies within us. God just needs to open your eyes because you have that seed. That cause breaking seed, you have it within you. That mountain moving seed, you have it within you. That world changing seed, you have it within you. You have it within you. She was going here and there. Here and there. My prayer for you is that before you leave this conference this afternoon, the Lord will open your eyes that you would see, you would know, you identify the seed you carry within you. Because a lot of us carry seeds that, uh, that the world is in need of. We carry seed that our communities are in need of. You're on a mission with your seed to crush the head of the enemy. You see what happens when you release a song and your song bring deliverance to people. People sing your song and they connect with heaven. They find heaven kissing earth. That is you crushing the serpent's head. The Bible says that your seed will bruise the head of the enemy. When your ministry is bringing deliverance and liberation to people, that is you crushing the serpent's head. When your marriage is a model to other marriages, helping other marriages go through the storm, that they don't fall, that is you crushing the head of the enemy. When you are doing what God calls you to do, bringing liberation and causing other women to be lifted and advanced and move forward, that is you crushing the head of the enemy. So he fights you so that you don't crush his head. Because he knows he's doomed. So that thing that God has put in you, the purpose of this conference is to stir it up. Go and crush the head of the serpent. In your family, in your bloodline, go and crush the head of the serpent. Because you've got something in you that is cross-breaking. You've got a cross-breaking seed in you. You've got a mountain-moving seed in you. You've got a chain-breaking seed in you. You've got seeds in you that will change the world forever. You've got poverty, hardship, eliminating seeds in you. And that's the purpose for this conference. I'll close with this. The sperm cell that made it to the egg is very tiny. It's very tiny. We all did biology in school and we've seen these things. They've shown pictures to us. It's very small. But that very tiny thing becomes a 4.5 kg after nine months. I don't know how many that is in pounds. <laughs> so you can help me do the mathematics. 10 pounds. So that very tiny thing, after nine or 10 months, becomes a 10 pounds baby. Don't despise your seed. Seed starts as very small. They come as small. And a lot of times we compare our seeds. When we see people's fruits, we compare it to our seed. Not knowing that they have left the place, that their seed has started producing results and producing fruits. That's why we are seeing the fruits. So when we see their fruits, we compare it to our seed and we get discouraged. So don't despise your seed. Your seed will always start small. But when you nurture your seed, when you water your seed, when you cherish your seed, when you care for your seed, you will see it blossom. The Bible says to us that if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it will produce for you a mulberry tree. You will say to this, that mulberry tree, be moved and it will move. So your tiny seed of faith can move mountains, can move mulberry trees. Your seed has the ability to crush the uncrushable. That thing that says cannot be crushed in your household. That thing that says cannot be reversed in your family. Your seed has the ability to change doctor's reports. There is power in your seed. Never despise your seed. I want us to rise to our feet this morning. I just came to give us a charge. I'm not here to preach. Let's first of all give God thanks for our seed. We all have seeds in you. Say, Lord, I am thankful for your seed. For the seed you have put in me, I am thankful, Lord. Thank you for finding me so worthy to carry seed. The Bible says that we have this treasure.
treasure in earthen vessel. Oh, the treasure in this earthen vessel is a seed. Say, Lord, I thank you for the seed within me. Lord, I thank you for the seed within me. Oh, Basat and Amano Shatalabai. Thank you for depositing in me such glorious seeds. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for depositing me such glorious seed. I want you to lift up your voice and pray. Father, open my eyes to know, to see my seed. Help me identify my seed. Like we saw in the scripture, this woman had seed, yet she could not know. She was oblivious to her seed. A lot of us are oblivious to the seed that we carry. Say, Father, help me. Open my eyes to the seed within me. Open my eyes to the seed within me. Oh, Bashita, the Badora, Bador, Satan, Amanaye. Open my eyes to the seed within me. In the name of Jesus. We are going to be praying. Isaiah 62 and verse 8. Isaiah 62 verse 8 says, The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by the arm of his strength. says, Surely I will no more give your corn to the meat for your enemies. Your corn is your seed. I will no more give your corn to the meat for your enemies. And the sons of the strangers shall not drink your wine for which you have labored. I want you to lift up your voice and pray with me this afternoon. And say, Father, that which is my seed. Your seed is your child. Your seed is your assignment. Your seed is your purpose. Your seed is your vision. Your seed is your dream. Say, Father, I declare that my seed will never be meat for my enemies. Ah, Balo Sotanamana Shataye. My seed will not be meat for my enemies. Your ministry is your seed. Your marriage is your seed. Marakanta the Bado Shataya. Your career is your seed. Say, Lord, I decree that my seed will not be meat for my enemies. In the name of Jesus. It will not be meat for my adversaries. They will not fit on that which God has put inside of me. They will not fit on that which God has placed in my hands. My seed will not be meat for my adversaries. In the name of Jesus. Oh, mother, the shata da ba do tata ye. Mana kanda da ba liba do da ba da sota ye. My seed, my seed, my seed will not be meat for my adversaries. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Job chapter 20 and verse 15 says, he had swallowed down riches. Speaking of the adversary, he had swallowed down riches and he shall vomit them. So it is not even all, it's not over even when they swallow down the riches. It's not over even when they swallow down your riches, your, your, your seed. It's not over yet. It's not game over. The Bible says that God won't let them keep it in. Even though they swallowed it, they will vomit it again. I want you to pray. Perhaps your seed has been swallowed. Ah, but don't shut up. I don't know that seed within you that has been swallowed. Perhaps it has been swallowed. I want you to lift up your voice and pray and say, Father, anywhere that my seed has been swallowed, let it be vomited out now in the name of Jesus. I command everything that has been swallowed up by the enemy. My soul, my seed, my king to utter, my seed, my marriage, my gifting, my ministry, my purpose, my career, my dreams, my vision, that which is a seed within me, that has been swallowed by the enemy, in the name of Jesus, hear the word of God, vomit it out in Jesus' name, vomit it, I command my seed, today is the day of deliverance, today is the day of salvation, let my seed be vomited, I don't care who swallowed it, I don't care where it has been swallowed, let it be vomited out now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We are still praying. Isaiah 65 and verse 23. He says, They will not labor in vain, and their children will not be doomed to misfortune. Hey, your children will not be doomed to misfortune. In the name of Jesus. Your seed will not be doomed to misfortune. I want you to lift up your voice and pray with me, saying, My seed, my seed, my purpose, my calling, my assignment, my mission, my mandate will not be doomed to misfortune. My children will not be doomed to misfortune. In the name of Jesus, I boldly declare, My seed will not be doomed to misfortune. Hey, I don't know what is that seed you carry. Somebody boldly declare this morning with me, My seed will not be doomed to misfortune. Oh, Bashat I want you to pray for your children this afternoon. Declare over your children. My children will not be robbers. My seed will not be robbers. My seed will not be criminals. My seed will not be pagans. The life of my seed will not be wasted. My seed will not serve the adversaries. In the name of Jesus. The life of my seed will not be wasted. The life of my seed will not be wasted. I prophesy over every child represented here that their life will not be wasted. Jesus. They will not serve the adversaries. Our seed will not be wasted. In the name 
name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your hands and give God thanks. Say, Father, we give you praise for prayer and sad. Thank you for what you have done and what you are still to do in this meeting this afternoon. Blessed be your name, precious Father. In Jesus' name. Somebody shout aloud, hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together for the King of glory. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor. Um, I'm going to ask our fruitful vines to come us and uh, come and give us a ministration, please. So, ministration from the fruitful vines, our choir. So the Emin is in the spirit because we've got a talk show just after the ministration. That's why she was getting ready. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord is a good God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can sing with us or you can sit down and listen and sing with us as well. But as we sing, we pray that the Lord will open our hearts and open our mind to receive what he has for us this season in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is an outpouring of abundance new doors have been opened if you believe it, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The land is green. A new grace has been released. The glory of the ladder is greater than the former. The blessing is here. All over here, the glory of the ladder is greater than the former. The blessing is here, all over here. There's an abundance, there's an abundance.
opportunity to share, an opportunity for women to talk and share. Praise God. Finally, I grabbed my seat the other time. <laughs> Amen. Let's put those hands together for Jesus. Hallelujah. It's another session of the Women Arise Conference, and it's a talk show. Praise God. Hallelujah. A very practical session Amen. of this topic. Are you excited? Yes. Okay, so the last time I came with a big manuscript like this, I had two people in front here, and they were writing like a mock test. Praise God. Probably today will be the serious test. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then just to mention to the online viewers, if you have any questions alongside, send it to them. I'm going to read it out for them and they're going to answer. I know Pastor has asked me to use a very few minutes. I'll try as much as possible. Praise God. Hallelujah. So once again, I'm Sister Amen. And I'm going to have here with me two great women. Praise God. Hallelujah. One of them will be, you know, she's coming all the way from Chester Church. Redeem Christian Church of God from Chester. Amen. Sister Rebecca, please join us here. Thank you very much. Thank you for appreciating her. Amen. Sister Rebecca, thank you very much. So she's going to sit right beside me. And the second person quickly is our uh, sister, Tari. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. So I'm just going to retain her face for now. Hallelujah. I have to swap Sister Rebecca with some other person. Praise God. So let's go to the business of the day. Quickly. The theme says the seed of a woman, and today we are going to have a talk show, you know, in these two faces of our theme. One is directly related, and the other one is still um, an offset of the topic. It says, what do you do at your waiting period? What do we do while waiting? Now, we say the theme is the seed of a woman, and every seed takes a while to germinate. Agreed. When you put a seed, it takes a while before the roots begin to sprout out, and before you even see it coming out, then you see the fruits. Like Pastor said this morning, you can't compare your, your seed with another man's fruits. So every seed takes a while to germinate. Now, have you ever sown a seed in your life? Now, Pastor made us understand also during the church, your visions, your dreams, your aspirations in life are your seeds. Your ministry, these are your seeds. Have you ever sown a seed in life? What have you been doing while waiting for it to germinate? Has your own seed become a fruit? Should I come jealousy in your fruits? Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the second facet is, generally in life, apart from these visions and dreams, what do you do when you are waiting? And just the two, the only scripture I'm going to tell us, I'm going to, I'm not even reading it out for us, is in about Abraham and Sarah that had the promise of Isaac. And then the children of Israel had the promise, the promised land. These were the things in view, and they were looking forward to it. What did each of them do before they got this promise from God? What did Sarah do before Isaac came? What did the children of Israel do? Having spent, they were supposed to spend 40 days, but they spent 40 years. 40 days became 40 years in the wilderness. Praise God. So my first question will go to Sister Tari. Now, so many of us, Sister Tari, had, you know, a reason to wait for the promised spouse. Some of us had a reason to wait for the promised Isaac for children. Some of us married at an age we felt we had been late because we were waiting for that man that God says was going to be the spouse. That's for the singles among us that are yet to meet him. Some of us had to wait for that child that God promised us we were going to have. Oh, it must have been a long wait. We waited for so many years in marriage. Sarah waited for 25 years before Isaac came. So, I just want to ask you first, have you ever had any waiting time in your life? Tari? If you say no, that ends the show for you. <laughs> Amen. Have you ever had any time that you've waited for anything at all that God has told you in your life? Thank you. That's a very pertinent question for us because I know we're waiting for a child in our marriage. Um, but uh, I've shared this testimony before, and I thought it would be um, um, it would be appropriate to share it in this conference as well. Um, it was when I trained in my first career. I'm in the process of changing my careers now, but it was when I trained the first time. I spent three years at university, um, and I graduated in my fourth because the university where I was at, um, you don't graduate in the year that you fi you finish for nursing and social work students. I was doing social work at the time. Uh, you graduate a year after. But I remember after I finished training, I could not get a job. 
I couldn't, I applied, I applied everywhere. Oh my goodness, I applied. At the time I was serving as um, in, the youth, um, in the youth department and, and um, I was leading there. It was a very difficult time for me uh, because my mom had expressly told me not to train as a social worker. She wanted me to be a nurse, but I couldn't see myself being a nurse uh, because I don't like needles and blood. So when I finished, my mom would say to me, I told you, I told you not to do this. Um, in that time, um, looking back now, when I look back, uh, 2020, when you look back in hindsight, your vision is 2020. It was an opportunity that God gave me to be able to serve. Because whilst I was looking, I was doing other things as well. I was working in assistance job. I would, any job that I could find to do, I did. And it was quite embarrassing because I had my DBS, that head there, that I was She's waiting on a job. Exactly. Hallelujah. Exactly. He says, I am a qualified social worker and I'm doing all these assistance jobs. And it was humbling as well in that time. But I was able to do things in church that I would not have been able to do in that Hallelujah. Time. A round of applause for that. She was able to do things in church that on a normal day she may not have had the opportunity to do them while waiting on God for that job. Yeah. Praise God. You want to say? No, that, that's it. So oh, oh, it, it just gave me an opportunity to do things in church. You know, uh, when we had youth conferences, youth activities, whatever it is, I had the time to do it because I was waiting. Of course, at the time, it did not feel like it. I, I wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm doing all these things because I'm waiting. Um, but looking back now, it was just an opportunity because I've not been able to serve God in the same capacity since then, since I've had a job. So I thank God that he gave me that opportunity to do those things whilst I was waiting. And indeed, after I had, after that period of waiting, I think it was over a year, I went into a job that I would never expect it to have had. Yeah. Um, and I had that job and I left it on my own terms to go into something that I am doing now that I am really deeply passionate about so all I can encourage us to do is whilst you're waiting don't just sit there doing nothing do something if you've got an opportunity to serve in church so thank you very much sister Tari I wouldn't even encourage you to do but you will do it yourself praise God you know I just love what she said certain things she had done that she wouldn't have time to do I pick on that again you know someone once said what do waiters do person said waiters serve have you ever gone to a restaurant and you see waiters so I read it somewhere on the social media. I said, what do waiters do? He said, waiters serve. So they are just standing there waiting for the next customer to serve. And she served in every department of the church. I know she has even said it to us in church before you came in, that she was serving in the sanitation department, every other department of the church. She was serving and she cannot do the same thing today. But the promised job is here. A round of applause again. Thank you very much, Sister Tari, for sharing that. So I was even talking about other aspects and she has taken us to a job how she waited on the job. The second phase said, before I give the audience, let me be done with my, with my contestants. Hallelujah. So the second part of this, sorry. Yes, my panelists. Yeah, um, Pastor, I have an opposing question. That's why I said that, not a contest. Because she is not saying the same thing. And after that, we are going to contrast. Praise God. So um, to my left, Sister Rebecca, you know, um, I've talked about that the seed, you know, your visions, your aspirations, your, your ministry, just like Pastor I've mentioned this morning. You know, Hebrews, Habakkuk 2 3 said, For the vision awaits its appropriate time, you know. So the vision has a waiting time too before it germinates, just like the seed we are talking about this morning. Now, the question is Have you ever sown any seed in your life? Has it germinated? What did you do to nurture this seed? Praise God. How did you wait for it to germinate? What did you do while waiting for that seed to germinate? Your dreams, your aspiration, your ministry. What did you do practically so we can go home with this? Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, uh, for seed, I think, you know, I've sown a seed and waiting on God for ministry. And, you, you know, putting it at mind that um, the Bible says that in Isaiah 40, 31, that those that wait on the Lord. So when we say we are waiting, are we waiting on the Lord? Because of us, oh, we are believing, you know, for this, we are waiting for that. But are we waiting on the Lord? Like Sister Tari said, that during that time, she was able to do everything for God that she was not able to do before. You know, so at that time, you know, we should be waiting on the Lord. So God has, you know, enabled me to sow a seed that I'm still waiting on the Lord for. You know, I, I'm not there. But I'm still waiting on him. So what do you do, you know, when you are waiting? When you are waiting, you keep on doing. You keep on doing. You keep on going. That thing that you are waiting on the Lord for, keep preparing for it. 
That's what you do when you're waiting. When you're waiting, you don't put it aside. When you're waiting, you don't pray and believe in. You keep on doing that thing. You are expecting God for a job. You are waiting on him for a job. Keep on applying. Keep on believing. Keep on telling people. You know, so let me just say about it, the, my ministry, you know, that God has, you know, enabled me, empowered me to sow into. You know, growing up um, in, in this ministry, I was, I, I met some people and they encouraged me that, oh, you can sing, you can write songs. I actually wrote a lot of songs. And they encouraged us, oh, why can't you put these songs together and put it in a CD or something? I said, okay. So we went to the studio for, I was there for a year, you know, because we were doing it gradually. But finally it came out. And my pastor was connected to so many people. So he invited loads of pastors. And we had a big hall. And we did a big concert. And Let's we appreciate God people. for that. Hallelujah. But, you know, we are clapping hands. But I'm still waiting on that ministry. Yes. But God empowered, you know, my husband. Before my husband saw it, I actually saw it that, you know, so the seed. Because we made a lot of profits. Because many people launched it. And many people promised, and the promises were coming in, and the money was much. And I received it, I sowed this, sowed this seed. My husband also received it, I said, sow this seed, it's your seed. And I said, oh, I'm not going to eat this seed. And I sowed that seed. And believe you me, I'm still waiting on the Lord. And while I'm waiting, I'm still doing the work. I'm not relenting. I'm not giving, giving up, and I won't give in. So while you are waiting, wait, just wait on the Lord. Like he said, that waiters save. And they make sure they are waiting. I'm not waiting on any other thing. You can see that today I'm here. I'm singing. Now, if people are, a, a lady is inviting me to Ohana for holiday. I said, invite me and I will come over the weekend if I can sing. Because I can't go to church. I sit down. Because it's a ministry that's sold in. And you know why you sow in it? You know, your seed is in the growing. So your seed is growing. And your seed will be helping you. You know, to do the work and not, not, not be tired. So while you are waiting, keep doing what you are doing. Don't be tired. Don't give up. Your seed is not forgotten. Your seed is growing. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Sister Rebecca. Thank you very much. One, one, one thing very paramount you've said is that waiting is not, it's an active process. You know, I was thinking I can just sit and wait for pastor. You know, I'm waiting. And I'm just dormant. But waiting is an active process. While waiting, there is a lot to be, to, to, be, to be going on before you can achieve what you are waiting for. In this case, you don't just sit down and wait for it to be actualized. While waiting, you do these things to actualize that vision and purpose in life. Praise the Lord. Um, I, 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 you know, she almost kept answering the, the, the ministry. You know, she didn't mention that. So now, I want to just swap this. Now, back to Sister Tari. Have you ever seen any vision and aspiration, just quickly. If you don't have any, I'll move yours to Sister Rebecca before I round up. Have you ever waited on God for any promise apart from the seed of your ministry? Have you ever waited on God for something and it took a while? You know, and what did you do before before I go back? So, because I want to know what to do. I want to know the, the actual step you took. Were you praying? Of course I do, sis. I pray about it. But it's not coming forth yet. She's told me what she did. So was there anything you did too? So I can add to what Sister Tari has said. Were you waiting on God for a particular thing? And what did you do? You can just Praise quickly put us through. Thank you. Praise God. Well, we thank God. So for just to say to the audience, yes. please, if anybody has anything to add within my five minutes left, when she's done, I'm coming to the audience. Thank you very much. Praise God. So thank God for all, all our children are blessings. None, none of them, no gender is no, not a blessing. But we know the part that we are from, from abroad. We know, you know, we know the one that they want. So, by the grace of God, God has blessed me with the two girls, you know, you know, when we got married. And there was a challenge that actually moved me to say, no, I'm having a boy as well. We had a family friend, they are Muslims. And the man will always say, ah, all your children are girls. Just two girls. And they won't tell me, he will tell my husband when they chat, all your children are girls. And I, I was not moved. But my husband is all, when we're going home, he's worried, his mind is off. I'm like, why? What are you thinking about? How dare him say all oh, my children are girls? When I have, he's very proud of his girls. That was when Obama became president and he had two girls. I'm, always, I'm proud of my girls. I love my girls. So I thought within myself, we need a boy. You know, just to keep quiet this uncircumcised Philistine. I'm sorry to, to say that. But that was what I said to myself. 
And I started looking on God and believing God for a boy. And I said, look, I want nothing else but a boy. I don't want a girl anymore. Though my husband has said we are done with having children. But I was believing God. And I started praying concerning it. It took a while for my husband to agree with me and started praying, praying about it. So when it comes to children and so many other aspects as well, we should be mindful that, you know, God command blessing on us. But they don't materialize because we don't do the things that God wants. And that's what I'm going to share today, you know, in Psalms 133. He said, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. If you read it to the end, he said, for there the Lord commanded the blessings. So there's a blessing that is commanded, but unity at all times. And I want to tell you, it is possible. I know people say, oh, it's impossible. No, because they say marriage is a, you know, it's a union of two good forgivers. So it happened now, we forgot about it now. Even if the other person may have not forgotten you, that you know that in, in unity lies my blessings. Kill it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you very on. much. A round of applause. Thank you very much. And, and so practically, you know, practically, you know, she actually expected, believe it, just like the case of Sarah, 25 years. Time elapsed, 25 years. And, you know, Pastor said something last week, Sunday, that she has come to the point of asking God, every lesson you want me to learn in this situation should not elude me. You know, what are you learning even while waiting? Is there any lesson in it? Have you learned anything about it? Are you prepared? Are you ready for what is coming? Praise God. You know, someone once said, I wanted twins. And, and then she kept on praying on that, on that belly. She was heavy. And she kept on declaring that you, this, this, when I go for the scan, this is what I expect. Mm. And when the baby came, just, just one, and some weeks after we asked her, so would you have still preferred a twin? She said, don't dare me. I can't sleep. For three weeks now, I've not had a good sleep. I can't imagine how it would have been with two children. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I'm actually saying here that, you know, the will of God, have you factored in God's will yes. while waiting? Praise God. Praise God. I'm going to give a purchase. Sorry, Sorry let me break something. you. Okay. Yeah, and um, just to finish that little, you know, God amazes us. And when I got married to my husband, he said he believes that all the children God want for him are girls. I don't know, from nowhere. But when that instance happened, I stopped believing with him. And, you know, when I got pregnant for that baby, I named that baby immediately. And I had friends, of course, I have mixed friends, I have Filipino friends, I have so many girls that will go out with. And I told them the name of the baby. And they are all Christians. And they called me, a lady called me, Rebecca, keep the name of a girl aside, in case, just in case. And I told her, I said, no. Because I ask of him, of the Lord, his name shall be called Samuel. Hallelujah. I you know what God did. We met one of our friends. She's a doctor. And she had a book. She said it's Egyptian genealogy book. That this book, what you are having is what you... So you calculate your age, your month, and it will determine the sex of the baby you are having. She said, if you don't believe me, calculate back your two girls. So I actually took the book. I calculated back my two girls. They are girls according to that book and i'm not joking so i calculated the one i'm carrying it's a girl i am not joking but when the child came out it was a boy Hallelujah. just for you to know yeah that god actually gives us gifts Amen. even though something i said this is you know this is what's supposed to happen but god breaks protocol please don't, don't try this while waiting well, yeah don't don't because that day you know because my husband was worried that she gave us a copy we destroyed it before we go home Hallelujah. we destroyed it because because it's not of god i said this is not we it, before we go home we destroyed it on the, we threw it out of the window it's a round of applause thank you very much sis. honestly i don't know what you've gone back with but a lot so we are going to convey this again and um, i believe you have gone back i just want to give it to the audience anyone wants to say something before we leave this place Anyone wants to add also, just briefly, thank you very much. Please, do we have a mic over there? Thank you. <laughs> I'm going to read something, because I feel the Lord is laying something on my heart. Hallelujah. Sing, O oh barren woman, mm -hmm. you who have not born, break forth into singing and cry aloud, mm -hmm. you who have not labored with child, for more are the children of the desolate, mm -hmm. 
than the children of the married woman, says the Lord. Mm. Enlarge the place of your tent and let yes. them stretch out the curtains of the wedding. Mm. Do not spare, lengthen your cords. Mm. For you shall expand to the right and to the left. Amen. 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 I believe the Lord is saying is some of us are going to get pregnant today. Amen. 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 The waiting is over. Stand up and by faith. Amen. Amen. Step out. We need to take the bed. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. God has already is already birthing something in us. Amen. 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 We are going to see yes, the, the seed. Oh, the yeah. seed. Yeah. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. You know, I can't say further. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much for everyone that contributed. And if you have anything online, you can put it down. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you very much, um, Dr. MM, for taking us into that session. So now we're going into a short, convenient break. Uh, just, we'll, we'll just make me. No? Okay. Yeah, okay, we're having takeaway. <laughs> That's good, we can take our food home. All right, so I will ask our prior to come and give us um, a short demonstration, please. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, with all the prophecies that have been declared on us this afternoon, can we just see the Lord in all our situation today? Because He still does wonders, He does miracles, there is power in His name. There is no impossibilities with Him. He said, With men, it may look impossible, but with God, with our God, nothing shall be impossible. Father, we see you today. We see you in every situation that has to do with our lives. Lord, we see you. Jesus, we see you. We see you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the center of it all, it's you that I see.
sister now. So she's no longer a guest. If I keep calling her a guest. I'm still living her in the living room. She has crossed from the living room. She has entered the bedroom. <laughs> she has entered the bedroom. So we all know Pastor Patience, but for those who don't know her, Pastor Patience is a co-pastor of ROCCG. She pastors with her husband in the Redeemed Christian Church of God in Stockport Christian Royal Center. Royal Christian Center, it's only in Stockport. Stockport. Hallelujah. And she's an author. You know, we had woman push last year and she pushed her book. Come on, somebody celebrate her. She, she pushed Penina as a pearl. It's a very wonderful book. I wanted to bring one. I kept telling myself, I'll put it in my bag, I'll put it in my bag. That's why it's not going to procrastinate and I left it at home. But I've, I've read the book and I was blessed by the book. Pastor Patience is a ferocious warrior. She looks very calm. Please don't be, don't get carried away. She, in the physical, she's actually very calm. <laughs> But in the spiritual, she's a ferocious warrior. Oh, yeah. She's my prayer partner, my covenant sister. We love and celebrate Pastor Patience. So we are very happy. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Even the glory. Amen. I, I even wonder um, what I'm supposed to be doing now because we are already loaded. Hallelujah. If we should share the grace. I don't think you'd cry, would you? 
this is a prophetic conference because from the minute I got here, God has been speaking. You will have seen me bringing my pen, writing very quickly. Honestly, because the Lord has been speaking since I got here. And I'm sure I'm not the only one hearing him because my sister confirmed it there. Whilst the choir was singing that one of the last songs, I saw a baby boy here, running around here. And you know, when you read that, I was saying thank you Jesus because I saw him. He was so cute, very, very cute boy. You know, our God is really good. It's a prophetic conference. I just want to declare to you this afternoon, Accrington, good afternoon everyone. I just want us not to be conscious of time because when you've got God speaking, we mustn't be afraid to let him speak and we mustn't be in a hurry. Thank God my sisters here took us through how to wait. Amen. And I know pastor is, 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 is trying to be nice to us because often in the modern church we complain about pastors we malign them, we grumble, you know, and we get them to a point where they are always conscious about our well-being. But if this afternoon you are happy for Pastor Joan to relax, please wave unto the Lord. You will not put in a complaint to the complaints department afterwards, after I've gone back to all them. Hallelujah. Pastor, they've all waved. They are happy for you to not be worried about them. Hallelujah. Because God is in this place and he is good all the time. He has been speaking since we got here. He is faithful. I just want us to worship him again for a minute. Just thank him. Anytime I call you answer. Any door I knock you open. Specialist. He specializes in making the impossibility possible. He is marvelous. He is mighty. He is awesome. He is great and greatly to be praised. Our God is seated on the throne. Nobody enthroned him so nobody can dethrone him. He is God all by himself. He doesn't need anybody to affirm him. Even if you chose not to say anything, he wouldn't be less of a God. Even if we chose not to worship, he wouldn't be less of a God. Even the stones and the rocks would cry out. For our God is awesome in this place. He is mighty. He is great. And he is greatly to be praised. Father, we return the glory to you. We thank you. We honor you. We bless you. Take all the glory, Lord. Take all the honor. Take all for what you've already done for us this afternoon since 11 a.m we want to say thank you thank you for the prayers you've answered even before they've prayed that prayer lord you'd already answered it and we say thank you thank you for the prophetic word oh god thank you for the prophetic songs and those who have ministered prophetically oh god we want to say thank you for the vessels that you've been using Thank you, Lord, for the oil has not run dry. But, Father God, you've been blessing us. We say thank you, thank you. Be exalted, oh God. Be exalted. 
in the name of Jesus and so our Heavenly Father even as we come to the last session of this day we are grateful for this opportunity and we are asking once again Lord as you have done already speak to us Lord move in our midst by your spirit and help us Lord to be aligned to the purposes of heaven and may we be obedient to the spirit in the mighty name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may please be seated. Hallelujah. Our God is awesome. He's so mighty. He's so good. I've been blessed so much. And I feel like what I'm just doing now is joining it all together because God has been speaking. I'm going to take us back quickly to Genesis 3 verse 15. We are talking about the seed of the woman. And you see, God is so good. Because when it looks like it's at its worst, it's actually at its best. Oh, yes. Years ago, the Lord spoke to me because I looked. And the days that I used to think were the worst days of my life, I noticed that they were the best days of my life. Amen. They were the best days. Why? Because there is a process in the pathway of the righteous, the path of the just, is like a shining light which shines brighter and brighter unto the perfect day. But in that process, the path of the just is not devoid of pain, is not devoid of affliction, because the path of the just is that path where the <laughs> you know those impediments that is stopping the gold from shining, they've gotta be burnt off in the furnace of affliction. So when other people are pitying you, really what is happening in the spirit realm, you are being perfected so that you come forth as gold. It is a process. You cannot short circuit the process. You cannot bypass the process. God refuses to be your magician. He is God and he's not giving birth to spoiled children. He is giving birth to children who have been well molded. He's not that kind of a father who says, when I grew up, I never had PlayStation, phone, iPad, car, this. So my kids, I'm just going to give them everything. God is not like that. Because that's a short pathway to disaster. When I see people who are self-made and who are overnight success, I pray for them deeply. Because I know there's no such thing. There is no overnight success. And whoever told you that if God is with you, you won't have challenges is a liar. Because let all men be liars and let God be true. You look at Joseph. Joseph was a favored son of God. Because even as a young man, he could see with the eye of the spirit and discern what other people could not discern. He was with God. He was an obedient child. The Bible even says about him, God was with him. And God was with Joseph so much that his brothers had to throw him in a pit. That was a sign that God is with him. God was with him so much that they had to change their minds and say, no, lift him out of the pit, sell him as a slave. And in those days, being a slave was not what you think. Just because your mom asked you to clean your bedroom and the sitting room and the kitchen, like I'm being treated like a slave. That's not slavery. In those days, a slave, oh man. In fact, it was the grace of God that he was still alive when the time came to be prime minister. Because if you were a slave, you would often die in the midst of that slavery. It wasn't a joke. God was with him so much. He took him through process. If Joseph had become prime minister, soon after he had the dream, he would have been tempted to be arrogant because the flesh is arrogant. I don't care what you say about yourself. The flesh is arrogant. If God never taught me a lesson, I'd be proud. If God didn't teach me some lessons, I would be proud. Because I was brought up in a nation where pride is admired. It's admired to be arrogant and prideful. We used to talk about class. She's not in my class. She, she's, she's not in my level. That's how we were brought up. Those are the things we used to hear. But God had to embarrass us so that we lose that unique pride, the arrogant spirit. God had to bring us through a process that you never knew you would get there. You had to clean that toilet so that you learn humility. 
Sometimes I thank God for bringing me to this country. I said, Lord, what would have become of me if I'd remained in that Zimbabwe? I would not be normal, I'm telling you. I would look normal according to human beings, but in the realm of the spirit, like the Nigerians would say, you're not correct. God had to bring me here to correct my head. And I'm not the only one. Say amen for yourself as well. Because God brought us here to wash off that pride and the arrogance because there is a process. There is a process. As, as, as Pastor Joanne was speaking before, the Lord began to speak to me and say, the problem that we have most times is that we don't recognize when the answer arrives because the answer arrives in seed form. How many of you know that the apple seed does not look like the apple? If you pray to God and say, Father God, I want an apple. Please give me an apple, Father. He is not going to drop an apple from heaven into your lap. He will give you the seed. And many times because the seed looks ugly, the seed looks too small, the seed don't look like what you're looking for. You bid it. And sometimes we do worse. We kill it. Because we start talking. The devil knows that he cannot steal anything from you. He cannot take anything from you unless you let him. Yes. He's a strange kind of a thief. Because he's the kind of thing who speaks in your ear. He comes to your ear and he says, has God really said? Because that's the story of Genesis chapter 3. Eve was a blessed woman living in the garden of Eden. A blessed place. Heaven on earth. And then the serpent comes. He knew he couldn't steal anything from her. But he came to suggest in the ear. I want to tell you, child of God, some of the thoughts you think are yours are not yours. Locate that there is a, 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 a security breach in your mind. There is a strange voice speaking to you. When you hear a voice saying, well, you've prayed 10 years, 15 years. You've been to conferences before. This is not the first conference you've been at. They've all been saying the same thing. These pastors are lying to you. Is that the voice of the spirit? It's the liar. But you know what? We entertain it. We begin to turn it up and down. And we begin to think our story is different. Then you start feeling sorry for yourself. Oh, woe is me. How unfortunate. How terrible. Hey, I've suffered. You've not suffered nothing. But the thief is speaking to you. Because he wants you. You are the only person with the code to your heart. Satan wants you to open it up for him. Because he can't come in. The glory of God is all over you. But he wants you to turn off the glory. He is speaking. He's saying, don't forgive that woman. She's a, she's a whatever. I can't say here because we're online. The, the, the voice of the stranger is speaking. Because he wants you to put in the code to turn off the glory. And you know, when the firewall of the computer has been turned off, the viruses, the, the malevolent malware will come in and corrupt the program. And Satan on a daily basis is trying to sow a seed. We heard about the seed of the woman, I'll come to the seed of the woman. But the enemy is trying to get you to open up so that he can come and steal and kill and destroy. Genesis 3 from verse 1. The serpent was more subtle and crafty than any living creature of the field which the Lord had made. And he, now we know that we're not talking about a normal snake. Because Bible scholars tell us that the word for serpent there is the nakash, which is the bright and the shining one. That sounds more like Lucifer because he is the bright and the shining one who got kicked out of heaven. He's now got no assignment and has the assignment of hijacking your assignment. So Lucifer says to the woman, has God really said? Because he wants her to unlock the garden. He wants to, to get in. He can't get in until she lets him. Until Adam, has God really said? And the enemy comes like this a lot. He will say, well, they told you this child will do well. You have prayed. You went to Holy Ghost zone, Holy Ghost original fire. You went to his glory and thunder and everything and you're still here. He's still like this. Maybe this child was sent to torment me. Don't listen to the serpent. Don't listen. 
you have no reason to get into a conversation with the serpent. If at this point, Eve had turned to that bright and the shining one and said, I refuse to speak to dodgy, strange, bright, shining, fallen angels. That would have been the end of the story. But you know, I find that most times we're not taking responsibility for our mind. The serpent has permission to speak. We ought to be saying, I rebuke you. Who gave you permission to speak? He shouldn't be talking in my ear. What's that voice? How do I know it's him talking? If it's not in the Bible, it's not agreeing with the word of God. Philippians 4, 8. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are, are praiseworthy, if there's any virtue in them, think on these things. So if it's not fitting in with this, what's it doing in my head? He's trying to unlock you. The woman could have shut it down. But you know what? She listened to him. And he only has, he can't deny himself threefold assignment. Steal, kill, and destroy. And how did he steal and kill and destroy? First of all, he made sure that Eve would misquote the word of God. Most times when he asks you that question, he will give you an answer. So you think it's your mind, you think you're talking to yourself. But it's not really you, there are some evil suggestions walking around. If you look at um, Genesis 2, 16 to 17, and listen to the instructions that God gave them about that tree of good and evil, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God said to them, from any tree of the garden, you may freely eat. And then when Eve was quoting it, she said, from the fruit of the trees of the garden, we may eat. You say, what's the difference? Well, I'm an English teacher. She forgot freely. She forgot all. From all. She forgot all and she forgot freely. By those two omissions, she made as if God has restricted their lives so badly. Like how some of us, we think the Bible has restricted us so badly. They say things like, if I was not a Christian, <laughs> if, if, if it was in my olden days, I would have known what to do. As if God is punishing me by stopping me from being angry and beating people up. We make as if the, the laws of God are grievous. We make as if God has unduly taken our freedom from us. And we've been put in this pathetic position where we become helpless. He's put us here and he's not even helping us. There are some trees that we are not allowed to eat. She forgot the all and freely that we have free will. God has blessed us with free will. Some of the things we blame the devil for, we ought to be identifying ourselves as the enemy. Because we are using our free will to rebel against God and partner with the Satan. I'll tell you why I call him the Satan. Satan is not a name, it's a title. When you look at it in the original translation of the Hebrew, he is Hashatan, the Satan. Our King James translators just translate him as Satan, but he is the Satan. Because what does it mean? Satan means the adversary, your enemy, the one who is hostile to you, who is against you. The Greeks call him the anti dikos anti, against, dikos your rights. Anything that is your right, he's against it. He's against it. And when we treat God as if God is unfair with us, and as if his commandments can be ignored safely, we partner with the enemy. The Lord was speaking to me, you know, as a pastor's wife. Oh, people really love pastor's wives, not. Oh, the pastor, he's a good man of God. Oh, he's so wonderful. Oh, pastor, <laughs> God bless you, pastor. His wife's a Jezebel. She's a Jezebel. Phone call. Hmm. My sister, hmm. let's pray. Hmm. So, when the phone calls start running, Pastor, what did they? Hey, Pastor, hey, hey. And then you get some self righteous, mature believer in the church will pick the phone and ring me. Hmm. My sister, uh, you need to apologize. They will always assume that whatever the gossip was, Pastor's wife must have done it. She's a Jezebel. 
And you see, it doesn't matter if the person who thinks that about you doesn't know you. But if my sister Joanne meets somebody slandering me in Piccadilly and she believes them, I'm going to be very upset. Because I'll say, hey, wait a minute, Joanne, you know me. Have I suddenly become a witch? Why haven't I killed you and your children before? You know, I will become upset because I think she ought to know better and know that me and her are sisters and that that thing that is being said about her sister is not consistent with the record she knows about her sister. Are you with me? So if Joanne meets Sister Basket Mouth in Piccadilly and Sister Basket Mouth tells her that I've started practicing witchcraft and she believes Sister Basket Mouth and joins hands with Sister Basket Mouth in Piccadilly to pray and say, Father Lord, we throw out the witchcraft spirit out of patience. Shanana Mayanda. I'm going to be angry because she has partnered with the enemy against me. Are you with me? So the Lord said, so if it upsets you, if your beloved and those who should know you partner with your enemy against you, how much more do you think I feel when you that I sent my only begotten son to die in your place. You, that the blood of Jesus is still testifying for in heaven. You, that I picked you up from the Mary clay. I set your feet upon the rock. When you, that I promoted you, none of your father's children reached the level you reached. Some of your people, they died before their time. You, that I saved you from death. How dare you partner with the Satan? How do you think God feels? Because when you begin to doubt God, you are partnering with the slanderer. He is an accuser, not just of the brethren, but he accuses our father to us. And he says, your father's not fair. Your father's not good. Why are you like this if he's good? And then we go, hey, <laughs> brethren, I'm so low today. <laughs> Lift up a song on my behalf. Through it all. Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. <laughs> I've suffered. I've learned to trust. In your heart, you're saying, God, you're not fair. But because you don't want to say that to us, you take up through it all. You know? We are actually agreeing with the enemy of our father. We are slandering our father. We are gossiping about our father to the enemy. And you know what? If you read that Genesis 3.15... The Lord spoke very clearly. He says, I will put enmity between your seed, Hashatan, and the seed of the woman. We are enemies. The battle line has been drawn. You cannot appease Satan. You cannot appease him. You cannot be his friend. He is not your friend. You can't. And you cannot listen to him. He should not have airtime in your mind. He ought not to be speaking in your voice. Sometimes your voice is coming out. It's not the voice of the spirit. It's the voice of Satan. That's why Jesus said, get thee behind me to Peter. For the things that you are interested in, the things that you love are of this world. They have nothing to do with the kingdom. Why am I speaking against myself? Before I bind the external devil, let me bind the internal one. Why are you listening to Satan? Why has Satan told you that your case is different when all except of God, Michelle, because she cursed herself. Yes. Nobody else. Why? Why should I give him air time? If I give him air time, I'm actually being against my father who has done so much for me. Do you know what? I give you a minute. Let's begin to repent. Father, Lord, I repent for the times I've partnered with the enemy. I repent for listening to him. I repent for agreeing with his lies. I repent, oh God, I repent for turning against you and partnering with your enemy. You are the one you gave me life and I've used my life to agree with the enemy's camp. Father, have mercy on us. Have mercy on us. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, by the blood of Jesus. Lord, thank you for cleansing us from our memory and our partnership with the devil. We renounce that partnership now in the name of Jesus. Any words that we have spoken with our mouths, that were in agreement with the enemy of our soul, we repent of them now in the name of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus nullify those words. Nullify them. May they no 
longer stand against us in the spirit realm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Revelation 12, 11. Do you know 10 and 11? It tells us about the abuse of the brethren. He even instigates you. Then when you have spoken out of fear and torment, he then takes that to the courts of heaven. And he builds a court case against you. He's using us against ourselves. But from today, in the name of Jesus, we rebuke you, devil. We rebuke the Satan. We refuse to listen to you. This ear shall only hear from the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, my sister. Hallelujah. Let's go back to the garden. Eve minimized the liberty that they'd been given and added on to the word of God as if there were more restrictions than they had actually been given. She said, God has said they shouldn't just eat of that tree, isn't it? Full stop. But she added, we should not eat, we should not touch. And God never said that. And sometimes that's what we do. We augment the word of God. We add on to it. And because we added on to it, it doesn't come to pass. Because Jesus said, heaven and earth may pass away, but not one dot shall pass away from the word of God. When you misquote the word, don't be angry. Continue speaking in tongues. It's not going to happen. Because it's no longer the word of God. It's your word. It's the gospel according to Janet. And God's not obliged to answer the gospel according to Janet. It's not there in the Bible. So don't add to the word of God. I need to know what the word says. You know, when I was in my early 20s, I had a very strict Bible teacher. I thank God for his life. He's in heaven now. But he was strict. And people used to be afraid to come for Bible study. So midweek Bible study, I'll be alone because people don't come. But God made it my personal college. I had one-to-one -one tutorship from the best Bible teacher that I've ever met in the world. And here I am today. You know, I'm sure in heaven he has a crown for me as well. Amen. But he said to me one day, one day I went with one of my friends, one of my Zimbabwean sisters. So we're sitting there shaking on the front row. He said, sit here. And then he suddenly said, what did the Bible say? Did the Bible say, resist the devil and he'll flee from you? So my friend kept quiet. He said, I'm talking to you. I want an answer. Did the Bible say, resist the devil and he'll flee from you? So she said, yes, yes. He said, show me. So she thought, ah, I'm a Bible scholar. So she went, opened James 4, 7. Did the Bible say, resist the devil and he will flee from you? Yes. So I said, have you opened it? She said, yes. He said, read it. So, you know, she went to read it. How many of you know that's not what that verse says? What does the verse say? But we never quote the beginning. We always say, resist the devil. Shanda, da, 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 shanda, I resist you. But he says, submit yourselves unto the Lord. Then you are in a position to resist the devil. Because the devil is not afraid of you. He's afraid of Jesus. He's afraid.